Welcome back. In this video, we're going to go ahead and do an overview of AMP for endpoints and uh, talk about, in the end, its integration with ICE. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of start out with uh, maybe not a lot of people know about AMP for endpoints uh, or have ever used it. Um, it AMP is anti-malware protection, and uh, it's it. You know, the reason f why anti-malware exists is because it. You know, things like AV or, you know, classic AV, where you're looking at a set of signatures that uh, are downloaded or updated from time to time, and it's looking just mostly at the, the uh, most commonly signature, uh, common signature seen instead of, like, ever the mass uh, amount out there. It's not looking at polymorphic by, uh, malware or anything that might change. It's very static. And unfortunately, malware tends to only see about... 20 to 30 percent of uh, and and stop 20 to 30 percent of uh, of hits. So uh, when Cisco acquired Sourcefire, uh, one of the things they did acquire as well is their AMP product, and that's something that was integrated with uh, with uh, their firewalls and their IPSs, and and there was also an endpoint component. Um, so it is you know think of it as kind of a, a cloud malware uh, solution and. And uh, I'll try my best to explain it. I, I might not give it the best justice, but uh, I'll certainly try. So here we go. So AMP for Endpoint is a uh, is a piece of software that's uh, that's installed in the uh, in the endpoint. And what it does is it looks for you know. Files as they come to, as they're as they're downloaded or moved, you know, inside the computer, executed, and any time that file changes, it's it's looking at it. And initially, when the file's downloaded, it uh, it comp computes into a SHA and sends that uh, that SHA hash to the AMP cloud. And the AMP cloud, you know, the first thing it does is, have I seen it before? If it's seen that 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 SHA-256 hash before and it sees that it's clean or malware, it, it can issue a disposition pretty quickly. Uh, if not if not that, then it can say, is it a part of a family of malware? And uh, you know, you may ask yourself, how would it know that? Well. In order to beat uh, AV AV vendor uh, AV signatures, you know a lot of these uh, malware writers are pretty clever. So what they do is they just change it slightly so it doesn't match the signature anymore. So what it, what um, AMP has this feature called Ethos, where it looks for slight deviations. And even though the whole hash is changed, if you're just changing a couple little bits in the file, um, mathematically you can actually compute how how much uh, how much change if it deviates from it uh, a known piece of malware by you know, only a few percentage points you know mathematically amp would know that so it, it still would be able to uh, to see that and that 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 feature uh, is, is called ethos so the next thing it, it, lo it can look at is um, it can look at the metadata of the files because sometimes with the metadata data for like an executable you you can see uh, you can see cer certain indicators of compromise, and that that feature in in uh, in uh, AMP for endpoint is called Spiros. Uh, next thing is if it comes back as all unknown, um, what it can do as well is it could do trigger sandboxing. And I don't know if anyone uh, remembers this, but about a couple years ago, uh, uh, Cisco acquired a company called ThreatGrid, which you know. They, they uh, do sandboxing, but they also uh, they also do uh, targeted malware and uh, and forensics. So, what what at that point, if uh, if nothing's been seen before, or you know, a certain co combination of factors, um, what it can do is essentially uh, you know upload that that file and in the threat grid cloud execute it. Uh, you know, assign points on it depending on you know if it's a you know if it's a zero day, it could potentially detect it in under seven minutes. So at that point, once it's uh once it's detected, AMP will change disposition up here, and so anyone else downloading that file anywhere in the world with AMP for endpoints or you know that have AMP for networks sees that file in the future, it will 
you know, it, it will say, nope, not, you shall not pass. And uh, with the AMP for endpoints piece of it, it will go back to uh, trigger on that, um, that connector, that AMP for endpoint connector to quarantine it. And uh, I spelled quarantine horribly there. So it can quarantine it, uh, remove it, and uh, let's say, for example, you have a very bad zero-day uh, malware outbreak in your in your environment, and you know if you if you if you have AV, you're you're struggling because you have to pay premium support just to get signatures written in a week or two, and you don't really know what's happened after that. That's uh, that's been downloaded onto your uh, desktop, so it could be doing secondary. Uh, malware infection. And AMP, what, what it will do is it, it has the ability to create a custom block list. So you can see everything that that endpoint did after it got onto your, your, your computer, see where, you know, what it reached out to, what, what registry changes it made. Uh, and you can effectively uh, find those secondary infections very quickly and remove them. Um, so it's a, it's a really cool product and I'm, I'm very excited about it. Obviously I'm, I'm, I wouldn't call myself an expert in it quite yet. I'm, I'm still working on the, the CCI for that, so we will see. But, uh, uh, you know, I, I just kind of wanted to show you some of the cool things it does do. And, and right now I'm, I'm in the AMP for Endpoints cloud dashboard. And this can be integrated with uh, your, your Firepower uh, firewall. So you can, you know, let's say a file moves past your firewall. You can actually, with this integration, you can see where it moves past and kind of have the, uh, you know, kind of see a map of what, where that file moves once it's on your network, if you integrate this, or you can just, you know, see it here. So I, I've got some, uh, right now I have some test data up and this is just kind of demo data. Uh, if I wanted to kind of drill into to some information, I can, you know, there's a lot of different views I can see. So if I wanted to see, for example, uh, malware that was executed or, or detected, I can see the, you know, in this case, there was a threat grid report, and you can see here that, you know, based on a number of conditions, it was able to to see a lot of uh, indicators of compromise, and you can pull up that report. I really l like how uh, how clean this is. So you can download samples of the malware, which it is comes password protected, so you don't break yourself. Uh, uh, there's an analysis video. Usually these are uh, pretty boring to watch unless, of course, you're watching kind of ransomware. And then as soon as it's executed, you'll see that ransomware pop up and say, please, uh, you know, your, your computer is now encrypted. Go ahead and, uh, and um, you know, send bitcoins to this this uh, web address. You can download PCAP captures of, uh, uh, of things that it tried to do on the network. Uh, artifacts of like, you know, things that had changed. And it, it really, you know, it talks about, you know, the indicators of compromise and exactly what um, what it did and and uh, how it determined that this was a piece of malware. So as you can see here, what I was talking about before, like DNS uh, rewriting, uh, trying to reach uh, certain, certain poor traffic sites. Uh, so it really goes into some pretty good detail and explains each of these things. Um, and uh, you know, going back here really quickly, you know, and talking about like you can see where uh, where uh, the device was seen on the network, what other end what other endpoints, how the device uh, behaved, you know, once it once it was on the uh, downloaded on the computer, how it moved, uh, you know, downloaded more files. It, it's a pretty awesome tool to be honest. So it, it makes you know recovering from those incidents very very uh, quick and you know, kind of reduces your exposure there. There's a lot of ways to analyze analyze that data as it's coming in. They've got a lot of really cool dashboards and we were just looking at the events, you know, the dete detections and quarantines if you wanted to dig into, you know, where, where it was uh, uh, quarantined. There's something called, uh, it integrates with something called cognitive threat analytics. So let's say you have a, a, a iron port or web security appliance, you can send your logs with uh, into the cloud with uh, to this thing called cognitive threat analytics with and it integrates also with AMP. So it, it combines the two uh, uh, two uh, um, products together to look for things that one thing wouldn't necessarily see. So it uses analytics to kind of determine threats that you normally wouldn't have seen with just one. Um, uh, you could do file analysis and uh, and test uh, files, um, check file hashes, upload files. Um, you know, 
find some root causes of like malware that was seen and where was, where the infection came from, the applications that introduced it. It also looks at like uh, at vulnerabilities, like hey, we've we noticed that you have you know really outdated malware or uh, I'm sorry Java. You need to update that. Like here's your vulnerable software. The risk. Uh, the CVSS score. So it's got some really cool features. Um, as far as how to go to, uh, about connecting it, uh, configuring it, you have policies uh, that you associate with a group and you download that, that AMP for endpoint uh, connector for that group. So um, I have a, a pre-built one cr or currently. So let me go ahead and take, pull it up. Oh, so, so it's security demo audit. And uh, let me dig into some of the Things. So you can create a, uh, a block list of cu custom features of like, like, you know, if you or custom blocks like certain applications or signatures you want to block, you know, maybe you don't want anyone having, you know, J Java at all. This is a great way to kind of block custom, uh, custom applications and just keep them out of your environment. Um, you know, the first tab, you, you know, very uh, simple stuff, send username and events, send file name and, and path name, um, you know, capture, com uh, command line capture. You can, you can uh, really customize what your users can see. Um, there's the, uh, if you're behind a proxy, you would wanna go ahead and configure this before you download, download this because you don't, uh, you don't want, it has to pretty much connect to the cloud initially. So. You want to make sure that uh, it can, and in this case, I'm going to go ahead and uh, add a proxy because I am most certainly behind a, a one. So let me give me just a moment while I pull it up. It'll never connect if I don't do this. So. Da -da -da. And you can, you know, specify the product version. I'm just going to go with the latest and greatest. And you, if you need to update or reboot, uh, or I'm sorry, update uh, the the connector or upgrade, you can pretty much have this pushed out from your policy. Um, you can also uh, include uh, exclusions. So if you have other AV installed or anything like that, you don't want it to necessarily uh, override it. it. The one cool thing is AMP does give the ability for your like Mal AV to Try first, essentially. So if you're, it's not doesn't want to step on its uh, its toes. It'll if it detects it, awesome. If it doesn't, it's going to go ahead and step in and try to take a look. Um, it is it is recording all the information of like what the f files are doing. But it, it, you know if your AV is going to hit it first, it, it'll allow it to essentially. Um, the file conviction mode is what is it going to do if it finds malware? So if something determines to be a risk. Now, I put audit because I want to show what happens if I download uh, something that's potentially malicious. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and, you know, your cache settings. Ethos is what I was talking about, that kind of, uh, um, that kind of fuzzy fingerprinting of, uh, of uh, files to look to see that it's, it's a, a family of uh, files. One thing you can also do is you can uh, turn on... Um, you can turn on AV. So if you wanted this to be potentially a replacement for your AV, if you wanted to just have a checkbox that there is AV installed, so when it's not connected to uh, to uh, the cloud, you've got that. I mean, some people do have those like, PCI requirements, and they don't want to have, uh, you know, they don't want to pay for another AV service. That box is check uh, checked essentially. If you just said, you know, Tetra, that right there, that will do the offline uh, engine. Now, is AMP for endpoints more effective than just regular AV? I would say so, but uh, you know, again, depends on what your auditors tell you you have to have. So you, you have that option to just check it there and, and have that just in case. Um, let's see, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and this is device flow uh, correlation looking for like malicious IP addresses it's reaching out to. So I'm going to update the policy. I, I didn't really make much in terms of uh, changes, uh, and that's fine. Product update is valid. What did I do? Oh. Done. And time. Done. All right. 
and window must be in the future. Let's go into the future. All right. All right, awesome. Then uh, what you do is you make sure that these, uh, these policies are associated with a group. And in this case, I just have, uh, I have a security demo lab uh, group. So now the next thing I can do is I can go ahead and have one of my endpoints that are currently located on here uh, download it. And you can push this through Active Directory. You can do it. Uh, you know, you can push this through, you know, whatever uh, corporate uh, thing that you use to essentially push your uh, push your uh, corporate applications. But in this case, I'm just going to manually download it because I'm, you know, this is a lab, obviously. So let's go ahead and log in. And you go to Management, Download Connector. Select the group, which in my case would be Security Demo Lab. And let's go ahead and download this. It might take a little bit, so I'm going to pause the video really quickly so you don't have to wait for my very slow internet connection. All right, and we're back. So I'm going to uh, going ahead and installing us now. Sure. I may have not given myself access to view it, but that's fine, as long as it's connected and... Oh, there we go. So it's connected, and we see my policy right there. Um, you can see the history of the files that have been downloaded uh, and their disposition. Some of these uh, you can change, and some of you can't. It's, it just depends on... Uh, on uh, actually, it looks like I can't change this. That's fine. Uh, it's probably my settings. You can also make sure your policy is up to date, uh, but it should check it automatically uh, on intervals. So uh, now that we've got uh, AMP for endpoints installed in a random host, uh, let's go ahead and integrate it with uh, ICE. So bear with me. So this is the threat-centric NAC feature in ICE. So I can go to uh, threat-centric administration, threat-centric NAC, and you want to make sure in your deployment, your system, that you do have that uh, enabled right here, which is enable threat-centric NAC service. Uh, so I go over here to threat-centric NAC, and I want to add an instance. So as so you can see here, there's quite a few you can use. Um, this is not PXGrid. This is uh, something different, but it is still awesome because it gives you this ability to kind of view your vulnerabilities and threats on a, on this dashboard and kind of make craft policies around them. So uh, let's go ahead and add AMP for endpoint. So we're going to call this FireAMP. And give it a second. So we're going to configure it. And let me find out what my... Uh, Sox proxy is. I have to remember what the port is. Alrighty, I figured it out. So I'm since I'm behind a proxy, uh, you do have to use a Sox proxy. It's an easy configuration on a on a. Um, on a uh, proxy, it just has to be socks. So give it a moment while it thinks. All 
Alrighty, let's see. I hope I spelled this right, but give me a moment. Might have to check the upstream pro proxy. Okay. Uh, Alright, I might have to check the uh, proxy. So if you bear with me, I'm going to pause the video and come back. All right, I'm back. Fix the proxy problem. So this is the next screen you get, which is which you get to pick the the AMP cloud. Which in this case, I'm just going to go with the US cloud because that's where I'm at. And it gives you a nice little AMP ex external URL. So you click on that and ask you to log in. So let me go ahead and go about doing so. And it'll ask you to authorize this. So I'm going to click uh, security demo lab and allow it to have access to just that group. It's going to export the events to AMP or endpoint or from AMP for endpoint to ICE. So it's going to redirect me back in just a moment. Awkwardly, while we wait on my uh, my uh, very slow internet connection. There we go. All right, and uh, I can now click finish. But I think it does. It is going to show me uh, if I want to see this. Wait for a second. Well, it's going to refresh and show connected. Usually takes a moment. There we go, connected, active, and I want to see the events that are coming through. All of those events are coming from the cloud, so you, you'll, you'll kind of get to see all that in action shortly. So, got my AMP for endpoint uh, installed. Now I have to do bad things. So I usually like to test ICAR, um, test, download. And since this is an audit mode, there's not really going to be any quarantining, um, so it's just going to detect it. And uh, let's go ahead and do do it through HTTPS. Right there, it's detected. So that was detected. If I go over to threats, I now see one endpoint has been compromised, potentially. And uh, let me go ahead and create, uh, just so you guys can see a quarantine policy in action. Um, so I'll go over to operations policy list under adaptive network control. And let's go ahead and create one for quarantine. I'm just not uh, having good luck at uh, spelling quarantine today. Quarantine, submit. And uh, we are gonna go ahead and create a policy policy under, so under global exceptions, I like to put, uh, create a global exception for quarantining. So there's two things I'm going to uh, call out here. It's going to, first one's going to be endpoints. And this is something I'm going to, um, Uh, may have moved it in this version. So hold on a second. Session. Never mind. Session equals quarantine and or session equals ANSI policy equals quarantine. And right now, I'm just going to go ahead and give it a uh, deny access. All right, so going back here. Uh, oh, no, we downloaded malware and it wasn't uh, contained. 
it's a painful threat. Threat detected. Uh, what should we do? So let's go ahead and quarantine this guy. He's been bad. So we're going to assign a policy uh, and go quarantine them right now so they get knocked off the network. And if I go back to my live log operations, I should see them get booted off. can't connect to the network anymore. You can also change, it doesn't necessarily have to be a, a swift boot to off the network. You could always 